اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ و ڈیئر ویورس اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دس نیو سیریز کمنگ ٹو یو فرام ایم ٹی انٹرنیشنل این ٹائٹل دا فوروم اینڈ آن ٹوڈیز پروگرام وی ہیو دا پیپل فرام امبٹس مین دیٹ از دا ڈائریکٹر آف کمیونیکیشنس فرام امبٹس مین اینڈ دا لیگل ایڈوائزر آف امبٹس مین آن مائی امیجیٹ رائٹ وی ہیو Uh, Jum- Juma K. Kamara, that's it, Juma K. Kamara, yes. um, who is the Director of Communications in Ombudsman. Sir, you are welcome to the program. Thank you. And um, on his right, we have Jenaba Kamara, the Legal Advisor of Ombudsman. Sister Jenaba, you are welcome to the Thank program. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Juma, let's start with um, explaining to us uh, the importance of uh, administrative oversight. In other words, the need of the Ombudsman's institution. All right, thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasure to be on your program. Uh, when it comes to administrative oversight, uh, we will look at it in the context of our Ombudsman. There are various means of administrative oversight, but since this is about Ombudsman, we have to look at it from that context. Um, generally, when it comes to uh, looking at the public sector, we have to look at the issue of good governance. Good governance has a number of elements, but one of the most important elements in this context is that of uh, accountability and transparency. So there is need for institutional arrangements or institutions to be put in place to not only ensure there is accountability and transparency, but to safeguard issues or whatever surrounds issues of accountability and transparency. So administrative oversight has an element of this to ensure there is accountability and transparency. Public sector management or public administration, we are familiar is such that there has to be checks and balances. And that is why we have um, the various arms of government. You have the legislature, you have the judiciary, you have the executive. This in itself from the word go is an arrangement for checks and balances. The same way we have other institutions and the ombudsman fits within the scheme of things, within this arrangement, this system, to ensure checks and balances. Why checks and balances? So that no arm of government, so that no authority, no institution or segment or entity has overwhelming power or too much power. When power is concentrated in one entity, or one arm, or one segment, this affects public administration because of some consequences that in the course of our discussions, we will come to, to know. So, making sure there are checks on institutions, public bodies or institutions, that's the need for administrative oversight in the form of ombudsman. If you look at public uh, administration or public sector management, public institutions are run by people. So it's driven by people. People who manage, who run these institutions. They are the people in charge, the MDs, Mm -hmm. the chief executive officers, the um, managing directors, um, the managers, the uh, whatever title we give them. These people run public institutions. It is their duty to administer. And administration is about making or taking decisions. So what type of decisions do they make? From this perspective, you know the dimension, the importance of administrative oversight. 
The decisions they make can be right in line with their TORs, but the decisions they make may also not be right. So what happens? People are, by nature, imperfect. If you give somebody an institution to run, he's a human being in the first place. Human beings by nature are imperfect. So that within the imperfection of man, there's a possibility of mistakes, errors. There can be sincerity, but decisions can be taken in a way that the person who takes decision, although sincere, believing he was, he's doing the right thing, but he's not doing the right thing. But that's also, and, and so therefore, there is need where these issues arise or these situations arise that a decision is taken and it is not right owing to mistake, human error. There is need for some form of arrangement to take care of that because that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. It needs to be removed or it needs to be readjusted. What mechanisms, what do you have in place to ensure that is done? This is the aspect of administrative oversight. When decisions are also taken, sometimes they are injurious to people. If they are injurious to people, if they harm people, if they subject people to, um, to some form of danger or unfairness or anything that a person feels is not okay with him. As a result of the decision that was taken, but it was taken deliberately. So what happens if we have scenarios like this? This is another aspect or dimension of administrative oversight. So people will take decisions deliberately to, to harm, to, to harm you. Deliberately to deal with you in a manner that is not fair. Deliberately to um, belittle you, to oppress you. So where there is another arrangement or a scenario like that, what happens? So the dimension of administrative justice has many, has different levels or dimensions that if you look at it, you will know, okay, there is need for some form of arrangement. That is what this um, institution or the ombudsman has come to address in, in terms of administrative oversight. Another very important dimension when it comes to public administration is that institutions are run by laws and rules, or rules and laws. Sometimes these rules and laws are followed. They are observed. Sometimes they are not observed. But talking of laws and rules, we must understand that there is need for arrangements, for some form of arrangement to ensure in the first place that those rules and laws are there. It's not out of the blue that we have institutions and there are laws and there are rules. No. There has to be a way of ensuring that we have a way of coming up with rules, a way of coming up with laws in terms of public administration, because we have something to do, so we have something to address, and we cannot do that when you are not, we are not guided by laws or by rules. Now, what if there are rules, but these rules or these laws are not observed? Then you have a dimension, you have an aspect, of administrative oversight. To ensure, not just that rules and laws are in place, but the rules and laws that are in place are observed, that we play by the book, that we do what we say we are going to do, that we do it in the manner in which we say we are going to do it, and that if we do it and we fail to do it in the manner we say we are going to do it, what happens next? So the, the, the dimension, I mean, the, 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 the concept of administrative justice is all around this, to ensure that these issues are addressed. It's not 
for cosmetic reasons that we have an institution called administ I mean uh, ombudsman office of the ombudsman or that we have uh, terminologies or jargons called administrative oversight they are there for very good reasons and some of the reasons and the need why we have and the need for ombudsman um, are contingent on some of the things that I have just highlighted. Uh, thank you very much, um, Jumake Kamara. Um, you have highlighted very key important points, and um, this is about all about public sector. All that you have said, does it only apply to the public sector, or other sectors are also included? I think we make that clear before yeah. we confuse the people. Okay, we can make that clear. Later on in the program, we will also go want to highlight these things and, and, and expound on them. But for now, it is to be very clear that the Ombudsman Office is a public sector complaints institution. Mm -hmm. When it comes to complaints, or when it comes to um, uh, oversight, we have powers only over public bodies or public institutions. So, so private, private, private institutions are private not included. Private institutions are not included, they are excluded. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now we go to Jenaba Kamara, your le the legal advisor. Jenaba, let's uh, first of all tell us how did this office, the Ombudsman, came about before we go into other things. Thank you very much. Uh, um, the Office of the Ombudsman started um, I think we should start by the constitution, the, the provision in the constitution that provides for the creation of the office of the ombudsman. Um, in section 163 of the constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, 97, 1997, um, states that uh, an act of parliament should come um, into being to create this office. So. Eventually, in 1997, the Ombudsman Act came into being, and it's called the Ombudsman Act, creating the office of the Ombudsman. So that was how it was created. And I think uh, it started operations in 1999. Mm -hmm. Yes. Basically, that's the the history of the office of the ombudsman. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I will come back to you, Juma K. Kamara. Um, you have mentioned about the public sectors. You have mentioned about good governance, accountability. You have mentioned about laws and regulations that governs those institutions. And you have also mentioned uh, if at a point, let's say, a government official put in a in a public sector has not uh, applied those rules and regulations or has applied them in a way that he should he or she shouldn't have or they have been applied in a way to hurt or injure the interest of other people so it is where the office of the ombudsman have a say now let's say for example someone is uh, mistreated unjustly at their workplace what should they do should they just come to you with a complaint or should they try to solve it inside or what are they going to do in that case okay um when you are victim of an act of uh, maladministration we encourage that you take steps at institutional or departmental level to address it. Sometimes when problems arise at institutions or the decision makers, like I told you earlier, they, uh, it is not all the time that when they take decisions, they do so um, deliberately to hurt you. So the moment you bring it up, Maybe what you were going through, the feeling that you have, that you feel you are unfairly treated. Maybe they are not even aware that they are treating you unfairly. Yeah. So we encourage that you bring that up with them. Or the next, the person that you are 
directly answerable to or next to you or whoever is there that has the ability the powers to address your condition bring it to that person's notice that this is what you're going through mm -hmm. that this is what you were uh, aggrieved about and this is what you want to see addressed and if nothing is done about that then or oh, steps that have been taken are not satisfactory to you mm -hmm. you think more should have been done or you believe you have not got redress then you walk to the office of the ombudsman to lodge your complaint or you write it yourself and take it to the office of the ombudsman or you can even email the ombudsman or you can even use our online uh, complaint uh, which is we have, which we have on our website so you can use other means or you go there yourself complain verbally um to the complaints officer and the complaints officer will reduce your complaint into writing and it will be read to you if you're satisfied you open your signature and it becomes your it becomes your complaint mm -hmm. so this is the steps or these are the steps that you will. but if under the circumstances there is no possibility of you going to the uh, people who are the subject of your complaint to in order to address it then you it is still within your rights to come to the ombudsman and the ombudsman will listen to you and um, take up the matter and handle in ways that uh, are in keeping with the ombudsman act or laws that are regulating the work of the, of ombudsman. the ombudsman now let's say for example um a complaint is unjust how would you deal with that if uh, like for it, example someone bring a complaint but the person who brought the complaint is the one at fault then investigations having been concluded the complainer would be informed that having investigated the matter the ombudsman did not come across or did not find evidence to support his claim therefore if it is a case of unfair treatment the ombudsman will conclude that he was actually not fair treated unfairly or if it is a uh, dismissal for example the ombudsman will will uphold the decision of the institution because it followed due process and it is in line with the laws uh, thank you very much uh, jumake kamara now we come to janaba kamara let's talk about the the what is the the structure of the office of the ombudsman okay um, thank you the structure of the office of, uh, the office of the ombudsman is um, um, is um, at the top of the I uh, would say that uh, the the ladder or the <laughs> we have the ombudsman as the head of the institution. Mm -hmm. He is the head, followed by the two deputies. He has two deputies under him. Then, after the deputies, we have the directors, heads as heads of units. Mm -hmm. There are various units that we have within the office. We have, for instance, the investigation unit headed by a director. We have the communications unit headed by the communications director and also the human rights unit. So underneath these units, we have investigators and the various um, people under their unit. For instance, under the investigation unit, we have investigators ranging from principal, senior to investigators. Then we have in the human rights unit too, the same thing. And, and he has officers also in his unit. So we have also the administration that is on the, and the HR issues under the admin, the, the, um, admin manager. 
she looks over the admin issues and HR issues and the other admin staff under the admin manager. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the legal officer stands in the center that receives like um, receives like files from all these players. He can receive files for legal advice from all of them. That's how it is. Uh, thank you very much, um, Jenaba Kamara, um, Brother Jumake Kamara. Now let's talk about um, the mandate of the Office of the Ombudsman. What is their mandate? All right. Um, the uh, mandate of the Ombudsman is to receive complaints, investigate complaints, mm -hmm. and uh, recommend or to address the uh, grievances um, that give rise to the complaints. The um, mandate of the Ombudsman can be found in the Constitution, the 1997 Constitution, as the has rightly stated, and also the Ombudsman Act, as he stated. The Constitution provides that the Ombudsman investigates complaints of injustice on account of maladministration. But it did not stop at maladministration. It also mentions discrimination on the chapter four of the Constitution. If you look at the Constitution on the chapter four, there is even a section, whole you know, section of section 33, uh, where it talks about discrimination. But generally, anything that relates to discrimination, it is within the uh, purview of the Ombudsman, as provided for in the 1997 Constitution, and also mismanagement. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Ombudsman Act, which provides that the Ombudsman uh, receives complaints from members of the public, complaints relating to injustice, again, maladministration, abuse of power, corruption, unfair treatment of any person, any person, any member of the public, being an action of a public officer in the course of official duty. We have used a lot of terminologies here, discrimination, mismanagement, unfair treatment, corruption, but we can use one term for simplicity's sake to simplify it, and that is maladministration. So to understand broadly and or simply what is the role or the mandate of the ombudsman, the function of the ombudsman is that the ombudsman investigate complaints of maladministration. Because why one word maladministration is sufficient is that if a, com if a public officer involves in acts of corruption, is that good administration or bad administration? That's bad administration, yeah? Maladministration. If a public officer abuses his power, that is maladministration. If a public officer treats anyone unfairly, that's maladministration. If a public officer abuses his power or does anything that, that is not in line with the laws, with the rules governing the public institutions or public sector, that is maladministration. So mismanagement, corruption, all of it can fall within maladministration. There is an element it states, acts of public officers or public institutions, let's say public officers, in the course of official duty. Because a public officer is a public officer because of the work he does. But a public officer is also a husband, right? A public officer is also a wife. A public officer may also be an imam. A public officer is also a neighbor. A public officer can also be a businessman somewhere, some form. So we are not just saying you as a person, because you are a public officer, whatever you do is within the jurisdiction of the ombudsman. No. So maybe later on in the course of the program, we go into details about jurisdiction. But for now, let's understand that the function is that we receive complaints from members of the public. Who are members of the public? All of us. If you are a student, you are a member of the public. 
if you are a gardener, you are a member of the public. You are a petty trader somewhere, you know, a, you own a corner shop here, you are a member of the public. You are a footballer, you are a member of the public. Whatever section you are, you are a member of the public. You don't have to be a public officer. So a member of the public, a member of the public uh, is that the person lives within the jurisdiction of the Gambia. You don't have to be a Gambia. You can be uh, on transit even. You are a member of the public. You can be here for two, three days, whatever. Days you are here for and you are continuing, you're going to Senegal. You are a member of the public. So members of the public is all of us, as long as you are a human being. Complaining against public officers for actions that they have done in the course of official duty. Also, if you are a public officer, you are a member of the public. Because this part is important in the sense that some public officers, they, um, so that's a parochial in the way they conceive the ombudsman. Or any attempt by anybody to subject their actions to scrutiny. They are now reminded in the sense that they see, okay, they are complaining against me. But you are also a member of the public. Because let's assume that you are a police, police officer. Are you, are you a police officer and a doctor? No. So there is a need for you to go to a doctor, right? If you are a police officer, are you an immigration officer at the same time? So there is a need for you to go for, uh, to immigration. To have your documents processed. And to go you will not go to your to go to court. If you are a judge, mm -hmm. you are a member of the public. Because you as a judge, when you are sick, you go to the hospital. When you need uh, electricity, you, you need who? You need what? Now, right? When you need your documents, the chief justice, you as a judge, will not give you any birth certificate or ID card or passport. You need other public institutions to go to, right? So all of us are members of the public. So, let us understand. The first, uh, when it comes to complaints, let us have it in two forms, right? Two parts. One, the complaints that Ombudsman look into are complaints emanating from public institutions. Being the actions of a public officer and the person aggrieved is also a public officer. So, you have a, I have mentioned earlier, people, how we run our public institutions. Others are making decisions on behalf of others. Or others are making decisions that affects others. So, you are complaining because your head of institution has done something or made a, or taken a decision which you believe is unfair against you. So, one dimension is public officers complaining against their heads of institution. That's one part. The other part, and, and that part here is, when I say complain against that, it is usually in two forms. Why do public officers complain against the heads of institutions? Usually two forms. One, they are complaining that their entitlements are not given to them. Their entitlements, their rights are not given to them. That's one form. Because public officers are entitled to, you know it, right? Later we'll discuss more in details. They are entitled to so many different things. From salary, payment of your salary, your allowances, you may be entitled to your leave, various leaves, you understand? When you say leave, you have an annual leave, you have maternity leave, you can have a sick leave, you can have your paternity leave, right? if you are whatever is given back. Yeah. You know, you go and home, you know home for ten days, eh? and 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 you do a babysitting. You are supposed to do that, you know. So, you have your entitlements. But another dimension is punitive actions within public institutions. Punitive actions. Punitive in the sense that. When a public officer has done something wrong, a public officer has 
done something that is that violates the service rule of the institution. Oh, the, 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 the act that set up that institution. I mean, the administrative instruments, the general orders, the public service regulations, or the public service act, or the, you know, or the, you know, the elephant in the room, the constitution, right? There is within the powers of the institution to take, to punish him, to punish him or punish her. And sometimes these are the issues that give rise to two complaints. Mm -hmm. One, you have punished her for something that he has not done at all. It's not done. You have received information that somebody has done something, but you did not follow due process to investigate, to hear from him. And then you arrive at the conclusion that he has committed that. So on his end, you desire to punish. Oh, yeah, he has done it. He has committed the act that he is alleged to have committed. But your punishment is not proportionate. Okay, let's uh, hold that there. Let me come to Geneva. And we have um, about the, the legal affairs that you have just talked about. Geneva, how does the law, that is the Ombudsman Act, make um, the Ombudsman stand out among other institutions? Okay, um, um, the functions of the Ombudsman and the procedures of the Ombudsman um, are different from the other processes. And for instance, the courts and the other, the other, um, you can say the administrative or the other quasi-legal bodies, judicial bodies, they're different in terms of, for instance, procedure. If you come to the Ombudsman, the procedure is less formal. It's not very formal, as in the courts. Um, the courts, there is a strict rule that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. But when you come to the Ombudsman, you know, the Ombudsman has a very informal way of doing it, we, the way we investigate. We, I'm not saying that we, we are very informal in the sense that we are not even writing letters. We are writing letters, but what I'm saying is like the, the way the Ombudsman does the investigation and conducts a case is so um, very relaxed, not stiff, as in the courts, that you have to follow this rule. If you don't follow it, there is a, some, there's something that's going to happen or that kind of thing. Uh, the Ombudsman does not, is not that formal in terms of procedure. And then um, it's free of charge. You don't pay, there's nobody who pays at the office of the ombudsman. The services of the ombudsman are free. People can access, come to the ombudsman and get their matters um, investigated, do what they want to do, but they don't pay anything. And then we, we have investigators who do everything, go and come, do the investigation without charging any fees. It's all free of charge. And um, the confidentiality aspect too, it's not like an open court. The ombudsman um, does things in camera. You know, we, not, we are not even in the media, like investigate cases and put it um, in the media to show the people this is what we did, this is the investment. In fact, even our reports don't even show the names of the people. The, the parties in a case, not even the witnesses. Um, the only time that we do that is when we send the report to the president. That's the time we show the names. But when it goes to the National Assembly, we don't write the names. So the confidentiality is there, is guaranteed. So these are some of the things that makes the Ombudsman really different from the formal courts. Uh, thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Mr. Jeremba Kamara. I think now we, uh, Mr. Juma Kamara, we 
talk about it in our local languages. I think we have just about nine minutes to go, but um, let's say we summarize what we are talking about here in the local languages. Let's start with you. I don't know whether you go with Wolof or Mandinka. Okay, um, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it. Ko ningko mararo dali lo leka sabo purunga bundalon. Ulo buka bundalon di katun lafisa kadu ko le di modora. Isa jadi gula lesia. Ngan do ko sotoy ulo falita. Yo alanga bundado falon di. Yo mojo mo sabas do ko sotoy say alanga bundado lo. Isa jadi mo tamfanasi do ko sotoy say alanga bundal. One thing. Hana tar wal gul falon ka kefe na di manan ko. Aka nafas soto, baru wala minyak tu ko wala dulu lagi wala angka wala aku maya tu lepuru mula ngah wala. Member je dulu, nengko ombudsman, fom munga faham muni atun nengko ombudsman, muni atun nata, perkalu, perkat terajem bangku kan. Anu wala aku maya abedan dengin ala ko fom munga faham, ombudsman semina kian omoli, ala langka wala mau muna je. Nengol malang ombudsman ala langka wala mau di tiap muna fanola ala. Ning pen kila bela bunga kan, pen kila right. Iku mau beli dengan kang, mau berung kula orang kan. Hanya terlalu larang kula orang kan. Iku mula dengan kang. Ada tidak lawan pen kila itu nafah. Hanya suci hati orang. Ada tidak tidak lawan nafah. Fui orang kan. Okey, pen kila fikir tentang apa nak kula orang lakukan. Kau tu mula lebar mina no ayat nafah. So ombudsman tu fana abe abe sirum fajam. Fung orang muni hati na ombudsman fajam. Ko ombudsman abe jangan nengin kau mana ko. Kau koros dulu ke mana salah bundal. Mansala do kulala. Eka mune ke miya longo anin silo manta. Ombusman de jibi rakwa. Ya mune ke fana miya longo anin silo tatal. Ombusman de jibi rakwa. Ba nil ayatara dung silo luwal anin sartol minil bel lari. Ko mansala do kulala nyante nyatile na wole la kaje ko ila baro luwe nyomwe. Nyo manke. Modwala hakole be tinyala. Waranto modwala be mantora la. Saya walaupun mentoro, ambusman belorin perkau mahu jadi nyafita. Asal kumbono, asal nano ambusman ayah. Saya mungkin biji walaupun itu. Mungkin bunda full lebih jemin. Nanti aku lalu dalam perkau ambusman lalu doko faham. Walaupun itu mungkin jalan kau berdua kau lah. Masa kunda doko dulal. Walau dulu lebih je, ikut ya bayar. Anin silo manta. Ikut ya sim. Ikut ya fanya di leh suspend le. Walau dulu lebih je ya balala hakol. Walau ya balala jol le lah. Ya beri ala alaman sol dua lagi takkan muncul tu. Waktu tu lebih je fana. Mungkin kita boleh berikan nafas kita kuat di lami alam kafir di lami alam kita lah kau. Misal apa? Eko okay mula ngajol ha ngajol orang ala kau dia. Hani aja jual lah waktu lah. Ni kau dengan karo fara yang takkan terjo. Karo fara fon dengan yang karo dolar tili tang teman najis. Walau karo fara fon dengan karo dolar tili lulu mana najis tu. Hani kami ni lah yang tuai tina. Karo nafara draw. Ini anda kira, kira jossor. Jangan kamu info, walaupun info joro la karo la lembang, info itu dung isu kata level la lembang. Ini anda fajar dengan orang sotola, elasa wosan orang fajar dengan orang lembang. Info dung orang musuh orang bulu tawa orang musuh orang fangat le kono sotola ini tak karo orang si bang. Anu orang si fal kamu info mungkin orang kamu boleh hak kolej ilah ni antol la world ilah doku dolar ni e balian. Orang musuh orang bejil. Puru mula tak je, ombudsman ye sembunyi tu yang. Anu info lain jam. Niu ayat ter ikhwan yo kulurul dalam mula kamu ilah doh kulal tu mian longko among anu silo manta. Ayat jam tol tinjale. Ayat mula hakol nak karle. Kulurul ni ni landa tambira. Ya kulur mana faham ni ni kulur la wala. Anu kabinga temar yo fana. Anu ayat ter ikhwan ke? Kulur ni wo ni tanjung mu ilale. Baru bundal mengkafu ko masa la bundal ko kulbi belar ne besine yari ni belak ke nawari puru muli ngalon ko ni nying kita ni nying kita sabola walau ni nying kita ni nying dua ko muli landa tambole kalau ko landa tambo ufana muli luan tayale ni meye luar tinya ya kulu ni dua meye ya kulu luar sembuh dia lapan landa tambo ko ufana luan tayale so kamu fufu fana la Mungkin niat tuhan kau bimbang kerja lebih jenah iru alat eh misal jamal di lebar mungkin jual tu fana la nuwe alsoro alih borna ombudsman Bunda doa ni, walaupun ni tu ko, dalam mel besi ringin bangku ka, masa la doa kulal besi ringin na purun teliye, sorry, purun teliye. Ni ayat teran na sulo beje puru kata walikam puru na muna fang savi sola luai londo puru ya merdi mola, wakona, 
የቁቄ ሞል ለሙያሎን ካሉ አንን ሰርቶል ፎቶ ነው ቆለ እንደው ፈለንገ ኒዮ ስለፈሉ ነው ወንበር ማንሳማንከ ማንሰኩንዳ ላዶ ኩላ ዳማት እዛ መንበሲ ሪኝን ባንጎካ ፎሙ ጋምቤ ዲሞለቲ ባን የመንከ ጋምቤ ዲሞቲ ባን ቦሙንዲ በጋምቤ ጃን የሉዋስ ሉዋይ ሰንሰን ቦሙንዲ በጋምቤ ጃን አንዲት መንከ ጋምቤ ኖ ፎቲ ወይ ተፈሙ ሉንዳ ወንዳ ኢንፋይተር ኢቤ ኢቤ ኮሮስ ካዩ ኢቤ ኢቤ ቦካ ሰነጋል ላይ ኢቤ ኮሮስ ካ ካታምቢ እዴ ፈሙ ባንኮ ለሉዋይ ሰንሰን ካጁ ቦሙንዲ ቢያሎን ካ በኝ ባንኮካ ni ayatara ni man sakunda ado modu ka masala do gola kar mo buke kar mo mo min ya de bango ka ala sulo de masalo ni sasa de kalabi lo tano ni vere don karan le bisa balo war do private school ba bar jama de masal ka mo ni sulata bar certificate la jata ngana bona bola kadia ni re sulata id card la ani passport immigration wala kadia nal da modu da nyola kadabi do police saka al sama masala do gola kar no alte kar no nal sulata ko wala kadabi do lo kaswa nga ka apply do na ha ni nyata namo jule kadam tolo ziare mo monne mbe nyem banko mo beere chow hane mem be transigle ab police wol traffic police be tar la silo kan waran dum na airport la immigration tar la je so mo bije wolam nyindi ko ni aya tarantel ndata masala bunda pour ka muna fan service wol andu yemen kan gaifa ni silo monta tapala ya silo lam waran dum bije tapala silo lam isita ma sekunda yesu la service wol la yekule ka muna silo monta wol te tapala ya tiliya Nyimbaka nyimbaka jo iko ka jo. Ana ka jo le, anya nda ka jo le nda le sikeme la la, iko iko akenda be sikeme sama zero ga isa je ay tariya. Kodi? So, waron dong e jo roke e mari sito diro. Yan mo e jo roke mari sito sito aka munda ko ma jo. Muna nang ofo ko wat dole bina la, o mo kilun dole fana na fana la, e sina nyi nang kala, oke te dung, inya nda e ko nda ka jo le ko oke la le sito na fena, se mari sito na fe ko ya jo bido. Hanna yadara bisa fere tel bulo konon gamum fije wolum te ko tapale ya bundal min ya lon ko man sela do kulal katlin banko silal am bo suman be siri janni furu kalo wo molie ke fasa isaje isaje ko ila nyanto mun mendi ila hako mun mendi isa soto thank you very much juma ke kamera and jenaba kamera Uh, both of them are from the ombudsman office we thank you very much for being with us i think this is all time allowed us i wanted to go to her to test her level of wall of but <laughs> time will not allow us um assalamu alaikum mbokku teddi li lañu waxtu mayon bëggon nañ dem waxtane luñ luñ waxon fi yëpp pour ñu waxtane ko ci kalam wall of way waxtu bi li rek lañu mayon this is all time allowed us i think we will leave the rest until the next program then we will give you a tip of what we have discussed here today in the world of language and maybe in other languages but for now from us mt international gambia studios we say assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh